Man, it is great talking to you. But, I mean, who would have thought the last time when I saw you, uh, what was it? I think it was maybe about a year and a half ago or so. Yeah, maybe uh, even a little bit longer than that. Maybe a little bit. Could have been two years, though. But either way, I mean, seeing you boys was great. Meeting you for the first time. Who would have thought that the world would change the way it is now where literally we have to do this over the phone or you know, with some people doing Zoom and things like that. How are you holding up with uh, COVID-19? Uh, okay, there's a lot of emotion. You know what I mean? Like I'm in a position right now currently everything is awesome. You know, I feel great. Um, I'm I'm lucky. I know we were, we were just talking off air how, how where I live. I live in a little island off the coast of BC, uh, Vancouver. You know, there's a thousand people that live here. I, I feel safe. I feel good. I have my my means to to make myself feel this way so I, I i think you know there's a bittersweetness to this i miss a lot of things um but this time period allowed me to really dig deep and and you know talk about what we're going to talk about today going into my solo my solo career like the launch of my solo career which was non-existent before this you know like i wasn't it wasn't even really a thought in the, in the past um and then also I started, you know, like a practice, like I met it, I was for a while, I was meditating almost two hours a day. Um, yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I used to meditate before a lot and then I kind of stopped. I kind of like when we were touring with Delhi to Dublin, that was kind of my meditation in the sense I was in it, you know, I was in this world that I wanted to be in. And then, uh, I mean, I just, I just went deep and I, I started, you know, re- I started getting to Joe Dispenza. So it's like, I've always been into the spiritual side of things, but going the Joe Dispenza route, it's like I'm going in from the science base now. You know, it's like all, all it's like spirituality and science are coming together in quantum physics, and it's like everything is proven. There is science behind the whole spirituality, and I'm like, this is magical. So I, I was doing like, you know, an hour meditation in the morning, an hour meditation uh, in the evening, and feeling amazing and. And that, that really helped me because there was ups and downs, man. Like there was times when, I, you know, especially when we were in the lockdown phase, it's like, I, I'm, I'm like, what what's going on? I, you know, er, the questions everyone had and I went inside and I think that's great. I think that allowed me to come out in a in a place where I feel amazing. Okay, so is that why you decided on a solo project? Because in discovering and still discovering yourself, this is another... Um platform in discovering who you are and how you want to present yourself to the world and your spirituality and so many other things personal things i i don't okay so i don't know we and with the band we're kind of like we've been doing this for a long time mm-hmm. um you know and i think there is we're all doing our own we're all doing our own all the other two guys anyway rub and t are all kind of doing their own thing Mm-hmm. Um, and even Serena is doing, she's got her own, uh, academy going on now. She's, she's having oh, wow. a great time. Yeah. She's got a, you know, she's teaching and she's doing a lot. She's doing a lot. And, um, they, I think what was happening was as, as the other guys were getting busier, you know, we we're like, okay, like where, where's our focus going to be? What's going to happen? And then I was like, okay, you know, maybe this is the time I want to start exploring, um, get back to myself, uh, the, the sounds and stuff that I, what I kind of call this is like, this is the childhood dream. Um, Delhi to Dublin has provided me a life that I could never have imagined. I have done and seen things that people haven't seen. The normal person hasn't seen. I have been able to do things that musicians can only dream of, you know? So I'm like, in that sense, super blessed. And then I'm like, I kind of consider this bonus time. Everything I do over and above what I've done in Delhi Dublin is bonus time. So I was like, okay, this is my opportunity now. The other two guys are getting a little bit busier doing their own endeavors. Um, You know, Rub's involved in the cannabis industry and T's doing more and more stuff on the, on the managerial side, on the admin and uh, back end side of music. And he's, you know, that's exciting. That excites him. So I was like, hey, this is my time. Like, let's go in and do the child, the childhood dream. And for me, that was, that was straight up like pop R and B pop music, you know, like that, that's what how if I can go back to as early as probably around 12, when I was like, I need to do something. And it was, this is the feeling, like, this is what I want to be doing. So this is that, that feeling in musical form is what I'm kind of doing now. So yeah. And then it allowed me to go deeper. Um, do you talk about things I want to talk about and, 
And Delhi becomes its, its own entity. It becomes it became its own thing over very quickly, obviously. And and and, and that's what bands you know should do. And they have their own identity with everyone's everyone's individualness uh, fueling that. So in this case, I get to just fuel me and just do me, and that's that's an amazing feeling. So the band is not over. The band's not over. No, I okay. mean we had we had a full season uh, this year that got rescheduled to next year. So. There was a lot of festivals booked. Uh, there was, we were starting to talk about what we we're going to do in the fall. Uh, we were definitely wanting to focus more on individual stuff and not really grind it out like we've been doing because it was getting a little bit too much. I have a son, you know, he's, you know, I want to spend more time with him. So I don't really want to be, and, and in the summer, it's great. Festivals are amazing. And like, man, do I ever appreciate festivals now that I couldn't go to them. But like, if, you know, and on the, uh, being home in the summer, was a feeling I haven't felt in like 14 years. You know, okay. like that, you know, you're just, like, yeah. Can I, yeah. I don't, sorry to interrupt you, but if I could just jump in just for a moment, you know, summertime is my busiest time. Yeah. And, you know, whether it be emceeing or reporting, or whatever. And even though all of that had to change, I will absolutely agree with you. It was kind of nice for one summer not to be, I got to be here. I got to be there. I got to be over here. I got to do this. I got to be over here. I got to be on here. It was just nice just to go with the flow. Yeah, man. This, this, like this, I really am appreciative of what's happened. Like I, I'm grounded and I'm literally grounded, you know, like going from 75 flights a year or something like that to none. I'm literally grounded, but I'm actually like, this allowed me to ground myself and just come back down and calm down. Like, that level of energy of constantly having to go and then, you know, the like touring life, man, it's, it's a thing and you ask for it and then you get it and you have to be able to handle it. And I'm very good at handling it. And I loved it for a long time, but it's intense. You know, you're like, okay, am I going to miss this flight? Is United just going to cancel a flight for no reason? And be like, I have a festival to get to. How do I go there? And then you get there and you got to set up and all that. And it's like, you're just kind of vibrating on this level for so long. Man, it feels and, good to just chill. Oh. And, 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 and I'm going to jump in again. People don't realize, too, for somebody like yourself, and I've heard this many, many times, what is it like to wake up in a hotel, or a hotel, but you wake up in the middle of the night and go, where the hell am I? Yeah, yeah, I know. That would have um, – so um, Rub, Rub was my room partner. You know, I've I've – literally there was a time when I was spending more time and sleeping in hotels with him more than I was sleeping in the same room with my wife. You know, at, at the one point in time, I think we were on the, on the road, like 200 nights a year back in the day. And he would sometimes wake up in the, and, and just look at me in the morning and he'd have this look and I would know what the look is. He he was confused and couldn't figure it out. I'm like, yo man, we're in Regina, you know, like, yo, it's Winnipeg. And he'd be like, Oh, oh I had no idea where I was. And, it would sometimes happen at home. You would wake up at night and you're like, "Where? What hotel am I in?" And you're like, "Oh man, I'm in my own bed." Wow, wow. People just, you know, it's it's funny because I remember interviewing Bret Hart once, and Bret Hart used to say that when that happened to him, he would actually keep the hotel, a card of the right. hotel next to him, just so that if he got confused, he could look over and look at the card, and it would tell him the hotel. The, the city and then he would remember what was going on yeah. you know, people people look at you know what you guys do they look at the glamour side of things they really don't realize um, all those traveling and meeting people and talking to people and always being odd constantly yeah. um, is not easy so in a lot of ways this COVID-19 as bad as it is people are finding good things through it and I guess this was your your good thing to find. Hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. Oh man, like it's just been a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, I'm and I, like I said, man, where I'm living, I live on an island called Galliano. I have land. I I just able to like even I was very fortunate to not be you know and, and this is in no way coming from a bad place, but I'm very just blessed that I don't have to be in a in a, an apartment with a roommate possibly that I don't necessarily like or want to spend that much time with, or, you know, like I'm here with my family. We were able to have open space, go out the whole time. We could go for walks, go out, hit the beach. Everything was amazing. So like 
thank you to the universe for that opportunity that I that I have. And now my my life will never be the same. And I don't and I don't need to do what we did before either because I've realized that this is super important to me to be home for a lot of things. And you know I want to be here for my kid and, and he's in school now. So summer holidays is a whole different thing, you know. It's so crazy, man. Thank you. So happy for you. But here's the thing, though: you did let somebody else into your life, though. And, and who's and, that? Uh, <laughs> oh, certain, I want to know where you're getting. Where, where's he <laughs> going with this? Okay. Uh, a certain Tyler Shaw, I do believe. Yeah, but, man. Uh, you let him into your life, and because of that, we've got a great single out. And congratulations on. Okay. That. How did this collaboration happen here? Okay, so this is this is um okay, so there's a couple of things here, right? Okay. So first of all, that single got pushed. So the the single that's coming out now is not that single. That single's ah. been pushed till January because we shot a video for it. Okay. Okay, so we met Tyler uh at a songwriting camp. And that was in 2017. Wow. I know, man. It's uh, time. Time. Well, time doesn't exist right now that I'm into quantum physics. Like time doesn't <laughs> exist, but like clock time sure goes fast, you know. So yeah, in 2017, SoCan put on a songwriting camp, and their A and R department does this. They do it uh, maybe I think twice a year now, and they're just they're trying. This is what they want. They want to make collaborations happen. They want you to meet other people. They want you to do. Um, do these these things so that you that music continues to get made right and so we had met on the songwriting camp and then one session where we were working was me him and a producer from montreal called foxtrot and she's yeah. a, a yeah, yeah amazing electronic producer right and and it was funny it was pretty full circle because you know we had met uh touring we had met foxtrot's um I think her partner or like really close friend, like before. So like this kind of come full circle. And so there was a session. What they do in these camps is in the morning, they, they assign you who you're working with for the day. So you'll get one producer and then another, like what they, what you call a top liner, which is like lyrics or melody, you know? Mm-hmm. And so our one day there was a group and it was me, Tyler and Foxtrot. And we, we wrote this song and, and that was it. And then at one point when Deli Dublin was putting out their last album, we, we, we considered this song for that album as well. And then I was like, man, like, you know, it didn't happen. And then I was like, this song is too good. So I, I did, re, I did re, uh, rewrite it, change it up a bit, drop the original chorus, made the pre-chorus the chorus. And then and, and so we have this song. And in the meantime, you know, I had in between 2017 and now, you know, I had heard Tyler on the radio in every, <laughs> every store I had been to. <laughs> He was on the radio all the time. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I just met this guy. I didn't really know who he was. And like, boom, you know, and at the time he was like, yeah, I got an album coming out. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome, man. And, and there he was. Like, I'm like, whoa, man, I wrote a song with this guy. And he's amazing. He's fast. Yeah. He's really talented and he's really fast. And I'm like, that can't up my game considerably. Wow. So, okay. So if that's not the signal. And I love the story, and thank you for that. And you're right. Yeah. 20, between 2017 and 2019, uh, TS was everywhere. In fact, every yep. almost every red carpet I was at, there he was walking down there, and he was either nominated or performing at this event. So right. yep. you're absolutely right with that. So then what do we have right now? Okay, so funny enough. Okay, so the song is called Jealousy. Right. And it is a moment in time captured in sonic form from November 30th, 2019, pre-COVID. Uh, and it's a moment that I, I was at a strip club. And I laughed because we were kind of talking about this off air too. Uh, and, and so I was, at, I was a designated driver for a friend's birthday. And we ended up at a, at a strip club in, in Vancouver. And it's awesome because it was at the penthouse which is, you know, should be, I feel, world famous. It's not only, it was a jazz club back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's called the Penthouse because it was actually in the Penthouse before. And Sammy Davis, G, Sammy Davis Jr. used to perform there. Um, it was a place that was safe for black artists to perform. It was, it was 
you know, so it's got history. It's part of the social fabric in Vancouver. It's where Motley Crue got girls, girls, girls from because there's a sign, a neon sign that says girls and it flashes. Um, so there is history here, man. And I was just the designated driver. And I was honestly just capturing this one moment in time. And I was talking to some of the dancers, like having conversations. It's amazing, you know, like life is so much more amazing when you're just sober and having like being real and but like, you know, like there is some magic, there's magic there. It's it's a fantasy. It's an escape. And it's like, this is, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. If you can look at it from, from, from what it is, you know, and, and, and also, so I was just talking about like the quality of the pole dancing because it is incredibly difficult. So we had these conversations and we started talking about sexual energy and how it, you know, and, and I was just joking around about, yeah, like, you know, I'm kind of doing research now on, on the energy because this sexual, sexual energy is nuts. It'll break up your family, man. And, and it'll motivate, it'll motivate the least likely subject, sub, subject to, to do something you would never expect. You know, like it, it is, it is almost like it is the, it is life energy. It is the almost the most important life energy that there is, you know, like you, you can remember back in high school, what, attraction will make you do you know and and so that's kind of what this song is and yeah okay it's a strip club song which is great too because i got no issues with that and it's but what really if you go deeper it is it is a magical thing Uh, and the, and the way that the song was produced, it was produced by Goldar Got Bounce in Vancouver. And he, if you don't know who he is now, you're you're gonna know about him because he's one, he's super busy. Two, he's wor- he's he is a workhorse, crazy energy. And when he laid down this beat, the, and then the synth came in, and this song, this is what the song called for. It was just like this is so right. This is what what it needs to be. So I can I can talk forever, man. But like honestly, like like it, it is this i'm just i call i i've kind of turned myself the vibes darling because when i was in the <laughs> studio with with goldar the first few times i was like you know what, what we're trying to do here we're just trying to capture a vibe if you capture the vibe move on you know there's no and that's the perfection in it it's like the imperfection and and you capture it and like let's go boom and that's and this that's what this this song really means to me is that is that moment in time that's just captured are we just gonna do singles is there gonna be any people oh, yes all this I think, okay, so right now the plan is singles, but I think at some point in time, um, you know, probably in a few months from now, I'm thinking about five, six months, we'll drop an EP because if I feel the songs need to be um, in a collection, we'll release that because I've got, I've, I, honestly, man, like I said, I've, just, I've been going for it, man. I've got enough songs to release singles for like two years straight. Wow. Yeah, it's a flow, man. You can't fight that flow. It just, it just happens. And I have the ability to record at home, so I, I went for it, you know. So um, I think at some point there might be an EP, and then we'll 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 kind of like package up the next bunch of singles and see where where because I, I know there's different vibes, you know. So these first bunch kind of do fit together in one collection, and then the next collection is slightly different vibes. So we'll we'll kind of go from there. Where can we get jealousy? Jealousy, all all major all major platforms. Okay. So Everywhere. Before, the world. Before, the world, exactly. Before we wrap this up, because, um, you know, we talked off air and we, we talked a little bit now, and, you know, you've got such a great vibe and everything going on. What can you say to people out there right now who are going through so much confusion, not just with COVID, but also, you know, the the, the talk of racism in, in such a different manner these days? And people are seeing things on social media where to a point where you're scared even to, you know, pull the covers over your eyes, you know, um, or from your eyes, I should say. What can, advice can you give them that hopefully they can attach themselves to something that can be positive and keep them going? Uh, you know, you talked about the meditation and things like that. What can folks do to just get through this and hopefully get through it on the other side okay? I think, you know what, man? Um okay so when we watch the news even even from before before social media times 
I'm maybe dating myself, but you know, like the news, the art, the stories are never the good stories. It's always, it's always about all the bad that's happening in the world. And, and if you, you got, I think we got to remember a couple of things here, like, okay, COVID recovery rates for pe- most people, something like 99.99 something percent. Um, the amount of beautiful people that are in this world outnumber by far the people that are complete asses. The the people who are anti-racist, the people who love, outnumber by far the the the, the bad seeds and the racists. And that that is always something to remember. And the I, I under the system is messed up. Hundred percent, the system is messed up. But like, man, like, what are you supposed to say? Like, Tupac said, man, you got you got to keep your head up because there's no other way except to fight this and move forward and 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 really with love is the only way. Like, that's that's what Delhi to Dublin would do, especially you know, in our shows was all about raising that love vibration, and that that love vibration will change and make change way quicker way fat you know like w- in, with much more strength than anything else can you know and it's like it's like growing up when you tell your kid you know kids are scared of the boogeyman or the monster or like the bad the bad person and when i try to tell our kid it's like listen man there's no bad people the people do bad things people are uneducated and some people are tricky but you got to remember when you walk down the street your chance of making it home safe is way higher than not so like the focus the sh- it's the shift of focus right the sh- it's all and and that doesn't help someone who's had to go through it though you know like my words are they make sense in philosophy but like you've gone through it or you have to witness it man that anger is real and i'm not going to discount that by any means like i i don't even know if there's anything to be said um this whole time has brought up a lot of a lot of things that I've done in my life, excuses that I have made for people, for, for moments that have been racist against me, things that people have said. I'm like, oh, yeah, my life, uh, you know, going back to Delhi to Dublin, people have said, asked me, like, so how, how was it like growing up? And I'm like, oh, you know, it wasn't that bad. You know, like I grew up in Richmond, a pretty multicultural place. It wasn't, I didn't have that many racist encounters. And I realized what, what the hell that, like, I, I'm only now realizing when I didn't have that many racist encounters. And I'm like, Jesus, man, people have grown up with none. People grow up without that experience, without being called a Hindu and being told to go back to their own country. And I'm like, I got called that in grade one. And at the age of six, someone to have to go through that. And that's nothing compared to what other people are going through. So it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very emotional time, but... Um, and there's a lot of deep thinking going on, but man, you gotta you gotta break it down, and things gotta get ugly for this for for it to be built back up. And I think, um, you know, if the world is ne- is not gonna exist as we know it, then this is it. Like, let's go in, let's go in deep, let it get ugly, let's 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 get ugly, because it's got it's ugly, man. There is that ugliness, but and then the the, the positive side is that it's not the the positive is more than the ugly. So and that's the only like thing of hope that I can, I can kind of hang on to when things get dark, I think. Beautifully spoken. Social media, place to go. Where do we go to follow you? Sunju Galaxy. S-N-J-U Galaxy. Most of them. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. What else there? Triller. What a TikTok. Oh my God. I can't, so TikTok. I can't do TikTok. I you know what, man? I'm going to be honest to you. I haven't even posted anything yet. I'm supposed to be doing stuff. Like, this is just a real talk, man. Like, what the hell? I don't get it. I don't get it, man. I just don't get I don't get TikTok. Like, I just Neither don't do. understand it, man. Neither do I. And I ain't dancing in front of nobody for 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, <they're not. laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, brother, it is great talking to you, man. I'm so glad that the music, everything going on with you, the spiritual side, the family side, the music side, the personal side. It, this has just been a beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing this with me. On right on, Rudy. Thank you. And uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully, who knows, man, maybe sometime in 2021 when I get the word that we can talk in person. I am yes. so, so, so looking forward to that. And even though I don't go... I'll go to a strip joint with you here in Toronto, man. We don't need to go. 
I, we, I, could just, we, we could just listen no. to Jealousy. Yeah, you know what? You can't. Hopefully, no, it's position. hopefully they'll play Jealousy at the trip joint. Oh, uh, okay, I'm going then. <laughs> Look, thank we'll you. go. Take care. All, All right. the best to your family and uh, definitely talk to you. Right on, Rudy. Take care, man. Be safe. Bye-bye. I just want to put you through college. I just want to go the